How's it going everybody? This is Delonum bringing you another crash course video on how to play the free game through Steam called Dota 2. Today over the course of this video we're going to go through the basic game mechanics which you can learn through the tutorial, finding out which of the two roles best suits your playstyle, picking a hero that best matches your playstyle, choosing a guide, buying core items, and camp stacking, lane pulling, and a whole bunch of other things to help you be a good Dota 2 player. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and look at all the heroes that this game offers. They have strength, agility, intellect characters, and they have two specific roles to choose from, the carry and the support, and they have different complexities that you can choose between. So. I decide I'm going to be a carry, so I'm going to look at all the characters that I can choose that are carries. And I think I want to go for a lower complexity kind of hero, so I'm just going to look what's available, I'm just going to look for somebody that I think I want to play, um, like maybe this, this one person, Legion Commander, and I'm going to click them, I'm going to look at their abilities, just go over them carefully, kind of get a vibe of how they are, awesome, they have three abilities and an ultimate that you can use in the game. The ultimate's unlocked at level 6, they have a talent tree, and an uh, item is called Aghanim Scepter, which you can buy in the game to upgrade your ultimate ability. Alright, so I figured out which carry I'd want to play. Now if I were playing a support, I would choose the support, same complexity, and kind of look for a similar hero, like uh, maybe the Witch Doctor. Again, same three abilities, different things that they do just carefully go over all of them another ultimate death ward they have the talent tree and we're gonna go ahead and just start with practice now when you first get into the match you'll see all those heroes you saw before I'm gonna go ahead and find that character Legion Commander that I wanted to play earlier and typically in these kinds of games you wanna wait until you figure out who's picking what and so that way you can't get counterpicked but I'm just gonna go ahead lock in find the little area where it says guides click on guides and so I'm gonna be a core so I'm gonna find a guide that's best suited for a core they have offlane a jungler for this hero but like I said I'm gonna go choose the core now and it's gonna tell me what items I wanna buy so right there recommended by guide I'm gonna just click them all that means I bought them I don't have to waste time as soon as I get into the game I'm gonna click where I wanna go. That way other people know where I'm going. So I clicked that. Now that I'm ready, I'm gonna head over to the lane that I told everybody I would be in. Deploying. And wait for the match to start. Now what happens in the first part of the match is bounty runes will spawn as soon as that timer reaches zero. You'll notice one of the items you bought was called a tango. And a tango, you use it on a tree and it starts regenerating your health had you lost any. It regenerates about 7 health per second and it's only recommended to be using in the early phase of the game. Now as the carry, you're going to want to prioritize getting last hits. You're also able to gain gold by denying creeps that get low on your team and you only get the gold from creeps that you get the last blow on. Alright, you'll notice that I just hit level 6 and got my ultimate ability. This guy is low, so I'm going to try to kill him. And I was able to do it easy peasy. Having a sense of map awareness is important, because otherwise I would not have been able to tell that that bounty hunter is following me. I'm going to try to lead him under tower, duel him, so that he'll be stuck and take a lot of damage. And he should use an ability to let me use my wand, and then got a kill on him. At certain points in the game, you'll notice that team fights are inevitable, and so by working with your team, you should be able to secure kills on different characters, just as I just won a duel from killing that guy, and I might be able to get him if I work with my team, try to stay on top of him. I used one of my abilities to help somebody else attack faster, and they were able to get a triple kill by working as a team, as I would not have been able to do that alone. Well, so as you level up throughout the game, you'll notice that you're able to select talent at levels 10, 15, 20, and 25. And since we chose a guide, you'll see that we have that golden box around the first talent that it wants us to choose, which is the 25% XP gain. So just go ahead and choose that, and you do that throughout the game. 
All right, so now we're just going to go back to the main menu and choose the support role character that we were going to play earlier, which was the Witch Doctor. And so he has the three same standard abilities, along with an ultimate, a talent tree, and a scepter upgrade that you're able to choose from. So I'm going to go ahead and lock in, and before I do anything else, I want to definitely go to Guides, find the guide that I really like. I usually go by the highest percentage since Witch Doctor is only a support role. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Select, and then buy all the items that it's telling me to buy. You'll notice as a support, you're going to see different items like a courier or an observer ward. And if you have a little extra change, you can just go ahead and buy an extra item that you think might help you out in the game. So you'll notice as you load into the game that you'll be on the radiant side this time as opposed to the dire side we were on last game. There's no huge game impacting difference for which side you're on. It just changes, honestly, the direction you play. So I see I have that golden box again. I'm going to go ahead and choose the... Paralyzing cask ability, and then I'm all set to go to the runes before game starts. As a support, your main goal is going to be to try to harass the enemy heroes as much as you can. That way your carry in the lane that you're helping out will be able to get as many last hits as they can without getting harassed themselves. Now, it's important to not go too overboard with harassment, but enough to really prevent them from harassing your carry. Remember to place down your observer ward in a good spot so that your lane goes smoother and you can see any ganks that might happen on you or your carry. Another important role that the support has to play is to pull creep camps into the lane to prevent your creeps from pushing up even further. This is usually only good if your lane's pushed out too much. Sometimes you'll mess it up and only have half of your creeps go there, but it's fine. You'll get it another time. When you believe it to be safe, it's good to place an aggressive observer ward. That way you're able to have vision in enemy territory and can kind of see what's going on over there as well. When you're placing down an observer or sentry ward, make sure it's not in the yellow box or else it will prevent those creep camps from spawning. Alternatively, if you're trying to make the enemy creep camps not spawn, it would be a great idea to place them there as well. But they might catch on to it. Alright, so I'm trying to pull the creep camp again, and I think maybe this time will do good. You just have to time it right so that the entire lane is pulled. Now on a side note, there are also side shops, which you are able to buy only specific kinds of items from, such as in the bottom right side of the map, Additionally, in the middle of the map, and also on the top left, where you're able to buy these special items that you're unable to buy at base. In addition to being able to pull creeps into your lane, you're also able to stack the creep camps that you find them in. Every minute they respawn, so if there are no creeps in the little yellow box, every minute, that means you'll hear a nice little noise and they stacked. The main goal of the game is to destroy the enemy's ancient. And to do that, you have to attack their base. And the base is defended by a tower, and behind that tower are these barracks. One spawns melee creeps, and one spawns ranged creeps. If you destroy both of them, then your team gains stronger creeps of this specific type. If you destroy all three sets of barracks, that means that you'll unlock mega creeps for your team, and your team's creeps will be way more stronger than the enemies. The game is divided into three main phases, with the early game lasting up until at least 20 minutes, and that's the laning phase, which means you're going to be in your one lane for the entire duration mostly, unless team fights happen elsewhere. Uh, the mid game, which lasts anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes, that's where generally more carries start picking up momentum and the late game can last anywhere after 40 minutes with the longest pro game lasting 3 hours and 20 minutes. Some extra tips are play safe so you don't accidentally feed which is a term people give players who made the enemy strong or fat because of their deaths. Don't take last hits as a support people get mad. Always use a guide and don't forget to communicate with your team as it's very important to win. Thanks everybody for watching my crash course video on how to play Dota 2. If you liked what you saw, if you think you learned something, like the video and go subscribe to my channel. I plan on posting more content in the future.
and I hope I was able to help you out.